there has never been a man or a woman, not me, not Bill, nobody, more qualified than Hillary Clinton to serve as president of the United States of America. No doubt a memorable, much talked about moment from the DNC. So a lot for us to talk about this morning. Joining us on today's OTR Roundtable, Republican Pat Griffin, that's him right there. Democrat Barry Feinkold, former state senator. Thanks so much for being with us, guys. So um, Hillary Clinton had a really triumphant night. Let's uh, listen to just a little bit of what she had to say. <clears throat> I accept your nomination for President of the United States. DNC versus RNC. Who won this battle and why and does it really matter? Let's start with you, Barry. It was the major leagues compared to the minor leagues. DNC was the major league. Republicans were the minor league. I, I DNC won it all day long. Well done. Minor leagues how? I'm talking about the Republican convention was minor leagues. No, I know. How? They couldn't even fill the stadium. They, they couldn't even get people there. The programming was, was Well, I'll poor. say that I was there, and the stadium listen, was filled. Listen, uh, their best speaker was Chachi. We <laughs> had generals. We had so many famous people. Come on, Chachi? Uh, Pat, I have a feeling you disagree. I can only say this. I'd rather be here than in Philadelphia, as W.C. <laughs> Fields would say. What about Cleveland? Um, and I wasn't there either. Look, I do think that the Democrats get best recovery, right? This thing started out very, very badly. The Debbie Wasserman Schultz thing got lost, not just because the Democrats were able to bring the Bernie Sanders folks together, but because Donald Trump stepped on his own message. When your enemies hurting themselves, let them keep doing it. Trump with this Russian thing really sort of took all of the, the focus off that. So you're saying the DNC won this? I think this, this from a production battle. standpoint, from a message standpoint, there was a big leave. I agree with Barry. Big difference between the two. Better for the Dems. And you're a Republican, which is very interesting. Let's yeah. talk about the speeches this week because there were some pretty powerful speeches for sure. Uh, Michael Bloomberg, Joe Biden, Michelle Obama, without a doubt, no matter which side of the aisle you're on. Um, the question is, the biggest lift, it appears, is the speech from President Barack Obama. Will Hillary Clinton effectively take that ball that was handed to her with that powerful speech and that momentum and run with it? Uh, look, Hillary Clinton is not a great orator, so that's not what we know her for. The speech was okay. It was a solid B, B minus. Uh, but the fact of the matter is she was five out of five. The two Obamas, uh, Vice President Biden and Mike Bloomberg, really stole the show in terms of speeches. Here's the problem for Hillary. Every time she critiques Trump, she offers herself as the bromide, the prescription for what's wrong with Donald Trump. She's a terrible messenger and a terrible candidate, which is the only reason this race is But close. the thing is, she was able to get more humanized by people like Bill Clinton, all the other people that talked about her, and that's been one of her big challenges. So I think this convention will give her a bump, and I think you're going to see it in the polls. But is she beginning, going to be able to take this ball and run with it? Because right. it's really now that's up the to question. her. Absolutely, and, and I think she will be out there really staying on message, unlike Donald Trump, who's just all over the place, and every day hurts himself more than helps himself. At the end of the day, she is who she is. We are not going to change Hillary Clinton. Her record, her problems, her personality, people know her, her and they don't like her. The brand is too established for too long. Uh, let's go back to the Russian factor. Just how seriously do you think voters will take Donald Trump's invitation to Russia to intervene in this election, although he's starting to slide from saying, I was just being sarcastic. sarcastic? I mean, people look at the United States as the adult at the table. He's like the little kid causing all this type of havoc. I don't think the, the rest of the country is going to really look very fondly on what Donald Trump said. Is Russia a factor in this election? Um, look, um, <laughs> the, the fact is Donald Trump cannot be in a position of being the president of the United States and say he was just being snarky, he was just kidding. That doesn't work. Those are the kind of things that get said that make people push back from him. So you're saying that that will hurt him. I think that maybe that doesn't hurt him, Maria, but I think the, the supernova effect of this being a binary choice is going to, at some point, allow people to say, you know what, the risk is not worth the potential reward. That's what I worry about with Trump. Um, Maura Healy and her ban on what she calls copycat assault weapons. Will she have to walk this one back in the end, Barry? I hope not, and good for her. There, there are too many gun manufacturers that are just changing a little bit of what a gun is, like but, a scope. But these are copycat weapons. All right, and that shouldn't be allowed either. So I think she's in the right. I think most people think she's in the right, and I hope she doesn't have to back him. 
little thing called the Constitution. The federal government's going to decide certain things. We need to understand Article 2 says certain things are okay. I understand what the Attorney General is trying to do. I think the Massachusetts legislature might want to have something to say about this. The question is, as Governor Baker has said, does she have the right as the AG to arbitrarily make this decision? The legislature is going to have to decide. Yeah, that. She I don't does think have it's arbitrary, though. I, I think what she's doing is trying to you know, ban AK-47s that are pretty close to what we banned. And I was in the legislature at that time when we passed, you know, the ban on semiotic weapons. And I think she's right by doing what she she's doing. She may be right, but the question is, is it in her purview as the attorney general, or is it something the general court has to decide? She That's does have question. the backing of the past her three predecessors. Of course, they're all Democrats. I'll give you that. But uh, do you think that, considering what uh, Charlie Baker has been saying, Governor Baker has been saying, do you think the legislature is going to take this up, the, regardless right. of whether you think I, it's I, necessary or not? I really think they won't take it up. First of all, they're, they're trying to get a lot of things done. They have this weekend and next weekend. And, and that's, that's right, right, this weekend, and that's it. Well, so. I'm thinking more like next year, that yeah, type of thing. maybe. Nobody likes gun violence. Nobody likes... There's a, there's a great case to be made that these guns are not necessary. But again, we have a constitution. There are law-abiding people who own some of these guns. They should be respected. Uh, Mayor Marty Walsh, who was at the DNC, he spoke. Every, a lot of people said that was a really powerful, honest uh, speech. He left because this poor child drowned in the care of a city program. Do you think that that was overplayed, or do you think that that was the right thing to do? Uh, Marty Walsh is a pretty smart politician, and I think he understands that when you're mayor, you stick to your knitting. Right. I think it was smart to get out of politics and get back here. It's one of the reasons he's a good mayor. It's one of the reasons that he continues to be right. popular. Marty Walsh loves the city of Boston, and when the city of Boston is hurting, right. that's where Marty right. wants to be. So this is not politically you know, judge. It was about doing the right thing. Let's, uh, speaking of Boston Mayor uh, Marty Walsh, he started, he got a chance to speak. It was the first night of the DNC convention and he started his speech in sort of an unexpected way. My name is Marty Walsh and I'm an alcoholic. On April 23rd, 1995, I hit rock bottom. Now we've heard him say that, but there he is on a national stage mm -hmm. saying it, pretty powerful. Very powerful. Who got the biggest lift from the DNC appearance? Because after he spoke, we also heard from Joe Kennedy. We also heard from Elizabeth Warren. What do you think? Jerry? I thought it was Marty because for him to go out on a limb like that, I, I think it really speaks volumes about what he's about. And there's a lot of people suffering from for, from addiction. So to it was have very that, real. Yeah, it was yeah. a very real, raw, very Boston moment. I thought no, he was. represented the city. Who's your pick? No question. I, I think I think the mayor did very well. I think that was a tough night. That Monday night speech was tough. We still had a lot of rancor uh, in the hall in terms mm -hmm. of the Sanders people. But I will tell you that I think uh, Joe Kennedy, I, I think there's something about being Kennedy, number one, and number two, he's not a typical Kennedy. He does very well on camera. I thought he did very, very well, and uh, I would give him sort of for the local uh, talent the, the, sort of the best place. Well, he was, for, it was his first glimpse, at least nationally, for a lot of people to see him. I a hope lot Ed of Democrats. Markey, yeah, I hope Ed Markey's holding that coat. Um, let's take a break, and we'll be back.